so we're now going to move on to the first introductory game, and this is a game that I played with the white pieces um, against uh, Zhou Zong Yang. Um, again, my pronunciation maybe not particularly great there, but uh, he's an Australian player who's now a strong grandmaster. Uh, this game was played in 2001, and I believe we're both IM strength at the time. Most of the games I'm going to show you are quite short and snappy because um, that, this is a gambit line, so we, we're going for a quick win, really. And um, I was quite proud of this game, actually, at the time. It shows some interesting ideas. So we get to the main position of the triangle defence after d4, d5, c4, c6, knight to c3, pawn to e6. And, of course, I played the most aggressive move, the move I'm going to recommend to you, pawn to e4. Um, Black really should take this pawn. We're not going to spend a lot of time on other options set for bishop to b4. Black doesn't really have any other good options because otherwise white's just going to have a very strong centre. So the critical line is taking this pawn. I continue knight takes e4 and we enter the main line after bishop to b4 check. Bishop to d2. Knight to c3 is rather a passive move and I don't think white can have any chance of gaining a decent advantage with this move. So um, we're not going to look at this. The pawn on d4 can actually be more of a weakness than a strength. Um, so we're going to concentrate on bishop to d2. Queen takes d4. Bishop takes b4. Queen takes e4 check. And now bishop to e2. So this is the starting point of the main variation. Now... We'll very, very briefly have a look at other possibilities here, set for knight to a6, but in ninety, over 90% 90 of all games, black plays knight to a6 here. I mean, um, for a start, it's worth noting that something along the lines of queen takes g2, which is uh, an extremely greedy move, um, could be punished very quickly. I mean, let's have a look. Queen takes g2. Um, one of our main plans is just to plonk a piece in on the d6 square. So... I don't know, maybe something like queen to d6 here would be very strong and uh, we're going to gain a very strong initiative from playing this move. Um, I think, uh, yeah, black's in serious trouble after queen to d6. We'll come we'll come back to this queen takes g2 in the, in the uh, theory section, but let's just concentrate on the main line for now. So uh, knight to a6 was played and this at least asks a question to my bishop where I'm going to be the bishop. Now, there's a number of possibilities here. Now, the most amusing possibility is, without a shadow of a doubt, bishop to f8. Now, it's just a really quite a funny position, this, because we've put our bishop on the starting square, and if you just glance at the board, you think, what was going on there? That should be a black bishop, not a white bishop. But the, the point is that, uh, obviously, if black takes this bishop, white goes queen to d8, checkmate. Um, so bishop to f8 is a move, but it's a bit too flash and it's not the best move. I mean, I've played pretty much every bishop move here. I mean, I've played bishop to c3, which is similar to bishop to f8. Um, I've also played bishop to d6, which is very interesting. But the move I'm going to recommend that you play in this position after knight to a6 is bishop to a5. Now, this does move the bishop away from quite a strong diagonal, but it does create a strong threat, checkmate, queen to d8. And I really want to play as aggressively as possible, and that's the idea of the whole DVD, so we're going to stick with this move for the duration of this chapter. And after this move, well, there's two main options here, really. Um, we'll come again to these in the theory section, either b6, which is what my opponent played, or f6. Now, I'd probably say that f6 is the more popular move nowadays, with the idea that after if we did play queen's d8 check, which we're not going to, then the king can run away. But in this game, my opponent played a very logical looking b6. And now, after this move, my bishop drops back to c3. And what I've gained by forcing this move b6 is the weakening of the c6 square. Um, at some point, I might better get a bishop to f3 and take on c6, or even a queen to d6 and some pressure on c6. So this pawn's been weakened. So after bishop c3, my opponent played the very logical looking f6, trying to shut out my dark square bishop. I continued in the most aggressive fashion possible. Knight to f3 would be an okay move, but queen to d6 looks far more tempting. And one of my ideas here after this move is on my uh, next move to probably play the simple f3, when the black queen can no longer defend the c6 square, so I can take it and take the rook on a8. So my opponent again played what looked like quite a logical idea. He played knight to h6. But actually this move knight to h6 ended up being quite a serious mistake. Um, 
because of a little combination that I had. So it's worth noting that after knight to h6, if I played the move f3, then my opponent would have time to either play knight to f5 or knight to f7. This is his, what's called an intermezzo move, a, a move he can throw in to disrupt my play. And after one of these moves, knight to f5 or knight to f6, my queen is forced away from its active square. But I have a much stronger move than f3. And I remember having a long think in this position. And I saw a very interesting possibility here that um, excited me. And it seems to be a very strong possibility. Um, the move that I obviously want to play in some positions is bishop to h5 check. But this is clearly not possible or clearly not strong at the moment. It's not strong because it's pinned to my king and black always has to move g6. But by playing the dynamic and maybe killing move, bishop takes f6, a shot from the blue, this puts black in a whole world of pain. Um, because black is really forced to take this bishop, otherwise queen to e7 is going to be far too strong. So my opponent took on f6, and now the idea that I had behind playing this move was that I can just castle, queenside. In this variation, you've really got to play with speed, tempo. Every kind of thing you've got to do has got to be quick, it's got to be aggressive, it's got to be punchy. And now you can hopefully see that after this move castles queenside, I have some extremely strong threats. Bishop to h5 is my main idea. When bishop to h5, knight to f7, queen to d8 would be checkmate because of the pin on the knight on f7. So this is my first threat, bishop to h6. But I also have created the threat of queen to d8 check when I can just pick up the rook on h8. And um, I believe black's in serious trouble here. Um, black's only got one move to try to keep in the game here. And that's rook to g8 his only possibility, which is aiming to meet bishop to h5 and rook to g6 and queen to d8 with king to s7. But again, it's all about attacking speed here. So I continue in aggressive fashion, bishop to h5, check. My opponent is now forced to play rook to g6. And now I continued queen to d8, check, aggressive, attacking, all forcing moves, king to f7. And then the whole point behind my idea of playing bishop takes f6 was this queen to h8 move. And I actually think this is very close to game over now for black. Um, okay, my piece down, but what can black do? He can throw some checks in at some point, which he does in the game, but my basic idea here is obviously just to play queen takes h7 and black's position is just going to collapse. It's actually going to be forced checkmate. But I also have ideas of rook to d8 and queen to f8 check. Black's best try is to try to get some kind of perpetual with his queen but this doesn't quite work out. Um, so really, he's completely lost, and he hasn't played anything too bad. He's just played this f6 move and knight to h6. So this is one lovely trick that I'd like you to remember, so hopefully you can play this in your games. And the game finished, knight to f5. So desperately trying to do something. And now just rook to d8. And I have so many threats here. His best chance now is to try to get perpetual, so he tried to keep checking me now. Queen takes c4 check, but I calculated that my king can escape these checks. King to b1. Queen to e4 check. Now king to a1. He's only got one more check. Queen to e1 check. And now just rook to d1. The point being my king has now found a nice safe square to hide out on. And after queen to e4... He no longer has any attacks against my, my king, so I can play the very subtle and very strong move, f3. Now, the point is, if I ever take on h7 with my queen, he might be able to go knight to g7, and his queen is defending the rook. But after f3, his position collapses, because his queen only has one square to hold on to this diagonal, queen to c2. And now, just the simple but strong knight to e2. All my pieces develop, black's completely tied up, my king is safe, and it's game over. The game finish, knight to c5, knight to f4, king to e7, allowing checkmate pretty much, knight to takes g6 check, h takes g6, queen to h7 check. And, well, my opponent resigned here, but it's clear to see... Um, he can't escape from uh, all the threats around his king. I mean, uh, if he plays, what can he try? Well, if he tries knight to g7, 
I just play queen takes g7, king to e8, bishop takes f6, check. And it's going to be at least a queen up for me. So, very short and snappy game, but shows you the potential of this variation. Things to remember then are this, always keep an eye open for any options for the sacrifice. Queen to d6 is a very important concept to build up your attack. And I don't think this b6 move is particularly strong because of this variation. We'll now move on to another introductory game, which will hopefully show you some more dynamic options for you in this opening.